Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Sean Rampersad here from The Mortgage Group. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about a sick topic. It's seven tips most realtors don't want to tell you about selling or buying a house. So here they are. The first one that I want to talk about is to look up Facebook groups. So there's tons and tons of Facebook groups out there about real estate. Some in particular that I want you to look up are wholesale real estate groups. So basically what these wholesale real estate people do, and they are not realtors, is that they go and mass advertise to neighborhoods and offer cash for properties. Basically, sometimes they buy the property off of people that are quickly, you know, desperate to sell, or they find investors like you potentially to go and buy the property. Quick cash close. You can get a great deal on real estate by buying through these wholesale real estate companies. There is less commission payable for one. Two, the people generally have a high desperation if they're dealing with the wholesale real estate companies. And three, uh, the people that are advertising with the wholesale real estate companies generally don't like realtors. I mean, most people do use a real estate agent, but uh, the people that are dealing with the wholesalers are dealing with them for one reason or the other. And it could be because they just don't like real estate agents and don't want to deal with that. So wholesalers can be a good way to find a good deal on real estate. I went out the other day and I was kind of shopping around on these pages and I found one property and I did an evaluation on what that property is actually worth. And it was worth about $35,000 more than what I uh, what what they had it listed on the uh, wholesale website. So it was a it was a fantastic deal. I went and looked at the property, and uh, most likely I'm going to be putting in an offer on one of these properties. I have purchased properties from wholesalers in the past. I know a lot of real estate agents don't like them, but. Um, it can turn out really well for you. So make sure if you're going to be doing that with a wholesale real estate company, you do some background research on the company itself. You speak to the owners of the house uh, directly yourself as well and find out what all the costs are involved. Get a lawyer involved. Please call me if you're going to be dealing with one of these companies. I can help set up your mortgage, and I am the easiest way to get approved for a mortgage. I also have the lowest rates in Canada. But definitely call me if you're going to be dealing with a wholesaler. That way, I can kind of guide you along the process so you don't get screwed. Number two, realtors generally won't tell you which mortgage broker to go and deal with. That's going to be up to you because it kind of makes them liable on uh, who they're dealing with. And if they refer somebody that's not really good, it could potentially ruin their reputation with their clients. So a lot of agents I know don't like to refer a mortgage broker, but it's important to deal with a mortgage broker that is high volume. The reason being is because the high volume brokers generally have access to more lenders. They also get bigger discounts on rates. So if you want the best rate, call me. I am considered a high volume mortgage broker and it's much easier to get approved through me because we deal with almost every single bank out there. So definitely you wanna be dealing with a high volume mortgage broker. So realtors won't tell you that 75% of real estate agents fail in the first year and 85% fail in the first five years. So those are not great numbers and there's tons and tons of agents out there. Like in the city I'm in, I think there's about 4,000 real estate agents just in our small 1 million population city. So that's a huge, huge number and 75% of those people are going to fail, most likely. So. That being said, only 15% of the agents are good at their job or good enough to stay in the industry. If that's the case, then half of the more than half of those agents that are advertising all over social media with their pretty pictures and stuff like that are not going to be able to sell your house for top dollar, are not going to have the experience required to negotiate a deal for you and get you the best deal are not going to fully understand the whole process, the ins and outs, the things that can get you into trouble down the line in the future. So you need to make sure you're dealing with some of those people that have uh, that are going to stick around, that have a deep and true understanding of the real estate process and the real estate market, that person that eats, sleeps, and breathes real estate. Those are the kind of people that you want to deal with because you want to deal with the best. 
not only to save money, but to save future problems, to get the right advice that's going to help you grow as a person. So you want to make sure you're dealing with someone good. If you do need a good referral to a real estate agent that's going to be able to get you top dollar for your house or that's going to be able to negotiate the best price for you and make some really good recommendations, then definitely give me a call. We get discounts on all kinds of things, including legal fees, appraisals, inspections, you name it. I'm not a real estate agent myself. Like I said, I'm a mortgage broker and I can get you the best rate, but call me if you want a referral to a real estate agent. I've got names for you galore in every single city in Canada and I can get you to the right people. A realtor will never tell you that property values are going down. You should wait for a year to buy. The reason they won't tell you this is obviously their business model. The business model most real estate agents are uh, a part of is, is short term. They want to make a, a sale and that's their job. Of course, they should be doing that. They need to make a living too. So they won't tell you that. Now, my business model is very different than that. My business model is long term. So I'm going to be dealing with you over the course of a 25 year mortgage if, if you go on a 25 year term. So I will tell you straight up, listen, I think that the market is going to slow down or I think interest rates are going to drop or I think I'll, te I'll teach you these things uh, with an unbiased opinion because I don't need to make a sale now. And that's the business model of a real estate agent. That's why they would never say, or most agents at least, would never say, don't buy right now, buy in a year from now. A lot of times when uh, a person uh, would say something like that, they would lose the client to someone else and you may go buy off of someone else. So they'll never tell you that. Realtors will never tell you, don't buy that house. Don't buy the biggest house in the neighborhood as an example, okay? Now, the reason I'm telling you don't buy the biggest house in, a real, or in, a, in the neighborhood is because I've done it. I bought the biggest house in one neighborhood um, because our, my real estate agent was suggesting it, and uh, it was it was a bad idea. Now, what ended up happening is that property lost value because of all of the other properties that were smaller than it in the neighborhood. And uh, when I went turned around to sell it, I ended up actually losing a little bit of money on that property. It's the only house I've ever actually lost money on. And that's because the agent just, they didn't tell me and I didn't know and I was young and I had no idea uh, about anything about real estate. Uh, but don't definitely don't buy the biggest house in a neighborhood. Another one that is kind of a pet peeve of mine is agents overpricing listings. So let's say you're going to sell your house today. You're going to have one, two, three agents in possibly, and you're going to get a market evaluation on the house. Now, most people in their emotional minds are going to think, yeah, you know, I'm going to list it with the one that told me the highest price. Well, that's wrong. That's a terrible idea. Because if you price your house too high, it'll sit on the market, it'll go stale, it won't be exciting to the market anymore, and you will not sell that house. And then the agent's going to come and start asking you for price reductions on the property. Um, they may ask you to do it every single week. It's going to be frustrating. I guess when you sell your house, what you really want is just a large spur of activity from the get-go. So you may want to consider going with the person that quotes you the median price, but also listen to what else the real estate agent has to say if you are going to be listing with them. Take a look at their reviews online to see what their Google reviews say. You want somebody with, you know, at least 50 Google reviews, I'd say, definitely. Uh, that way you are vetting this correctly. Try to get somebody that's referred by someone else. So an, one, another one of your friends have had the experience, that type of thing with the agent. Don't just go with somebody that is saying the highest list price because any new agent or inexperienced agent can walk into your house right now and tell you $100,000 more than uh, another experienced agent might, but they don't know what they're talking about. And uh, that's going to get you in trouble. So just be careful with that. And call me if you want a referral to an agent. Like I can get you a really good real estate agent that will do right by you. Most real estate agents will not tell you that you have to get pre-approved by a mortgage broker before you go shopping. So 
I know some do, and some want a pre-approval letter from your bank or from from a broker, that type of thing. But most won't. Most will just be excited to take you out, show you some houses, and potentially close on a house deal. The agents that are asking for the pre-approval are serious. They respect their time. They're probably busier agents. They're not scared to ask you the tough questions like, are you pre-approved for a mortgage? And I think those are the ones that you're going to actually want to deal with. Now, when you go to your bank to get a pre-approval, they don't review all your documentation. So I get a lot of phone calls from people on a regular basis where they say, hey, you know, I had this pre-approval letter from my bank. Then I filled out an offer on a property and then the bank declined me well that's because the bank does not review all your documentation and sometimes won't even pull your credit prior to giving you a pre-approval letter whereas what i do is i fully underwrite um, a mortgage and get you your pre-approval letter so that you can go and shop with confidence. You're not wasting your time. You're not wasting an agent's time. And most agents are going to be scared to ask you for that. So definitely reach out to me to get that pre-approval. I can get a pre-approval done within a one-hour time frame if uh, you get your paperwork into me fast. And some of the paperwork uh, I'll have in other videos here, but employment letters, pay stubs, that type of thing is what we're going to need to get you all pre-approved. So definitely... Uh, get pre-approved before you go shopping. So let's face it, there's a lot more things that agents might be scared to tell a person or uh, information that they might not uh, openly give a person. The best agents definitely will. But if you do have any questions, please reach out to me anytime and like and subscribe to my channel. It helps me get this really good information out to the people that really, really need it. I'm here to save people money on interest. I'm here to save people money on their real estate uh, goals, that type of thing. Thing. So please let me know anytime if you have any mortgage related questions. Thanks for watching.